Drake is the most streamed artist of the decade. The Canadian rapper is a household name with four Grammys and many millions of dollars. But how did Drake go from anonymous to international pop sensation? Today, we're exploring how Drake became the biggest artist. The notoriously reclusive rapper, born Aubrey Graham, rarely gives interviews and few people understand Drake's daily life. The Toronto native is shrouded in mystery, even though his music can be deeply confessional. He has the most charted singles in Billboard history, with a grand total of 209, but it's still difficult to know why fans are so enamoured with him. People point out that Drake doesn't fit the usual rapper mold. For one thing, he is widely considered the first non-American rapper to break through in the hip-hop world. Next, he was a child actor from the suburbs, hardly matching the usual rags-to-riches tale people expect from a rapper. His father was African-American and his mother was Jewish-Canadian, but many people believe that this is one of his greatest assets. In an industry that pushes a similar narrative for numerous artists, Drake stands out from the crowd. Other people believe his success lies in his digital savvy. As other artists struggled to make it in the digital world, Drake embraced social media. After getting signed to Lil Wayne's Young Money Entertainment, Drake released the now classic album Thank Me Later. However, the release of the album was postponed due to Drake injuring his ACL after falling off stage. Rather than allowing his injury to hamper his career, Drake started a satirical Twitter account which is still active to this day. Others credit the success of songs like Hotline Bling to Drake's Silly Dancing, which predicted a world of goofy YouTube videos. It's no coincidence that Drake is the king of streaming. A vast majority of his royalties come from streaming services because he is capturing a younger, tech-savvy audience. These days, he's performing songs with TikTok in mind, like Tusi Slide. Drake also understands that volume is important with streaming platforms. His frequent releases and features mean that he is charting numerous songs at any given time rather than relying on a single hit to pay his bills. His album More Life was streamed almost 90 million times in the first 24 hours on Spotify, meaning that every song on the album charted immediately. Plus, with more hit singles, he can demand more money when he tours. And then there are all the feuds. Drake has been involved in more disputes than almost any rapper in the game, and while many of them are seemingly based on real disagreements, they also serve as promotional opportunities, with every response garnering headlines and media attention. Perhaps his earliest known beef was with Chris Brown. They were allegedly involved in a physical altercation on June 2012, when Drake and his entourage threw glass bottles at Brown in a Soho nightclub in Manhattan, New York City. Chris Brown tweeted about the incident and released a song criticizing Drake weeks later. Despite no response from Drake, he and Brown both appeared in a comedic skit for the 2014 ESPY Awards and rehearsed the skit together prior to the televised airing, virtually ending the dispute. Only two years later, Drake was allegedly punched by Diddy outside of a nightclub because Drake stole one of his beats. The altercation was minor, but Drake still ended up in the hospital. Drake was also involved in a feud with Tiger, stemming from Tiger's negative comments about him during an interview with Vibe magazine. Drake would later respond on 6 God and 6 PM in New York. Some people believe this resulted in Tiger's abrupt removal from Young Money Entertainment. Then in 2015, Meek Mill became involved in a beef with Drake because he revealed that Drake used a ghostwriter for most of his raps. The ghostwriter in question, Quentin Miller, who had worked with Drake on many of his hit songs up until that point, and Mill wanted Drake's fans to know that he wasn't the genius the public portrayed him as. This sparked a series of diss tracks that only ended when Mill was sentenced to prison and Drake voiced support for the Free Meek Mill campaign. In September 2016, Kid Cootie went on a Twitter rant about haters within the industry, in which he called out both Drake and Kanye West. This beef fizzled after Cootie checked himself into rehab and Drake took the opportunity to mock him. Many people saw this as mean-spirited and Drake eventually backed off. As if that wasn't enough, Drake also has an unresolved conflict with Pusha T, who ultimately revealed that Drake was a father. Another public beef was with Drake's one-time idol and collaborator Kanye West. He has also fought with DMX, Kendrick Lamar, Common, The Weeknd, XXXTentacion, Jay-Z, Tory Lanez, and Ludacris. Many fans believe this trend reveals deep-seated anger issues, but others believe that he is merely using these feuds as PR opportunities. Certainly, every single feud resulted in major media attention, thus driving more people to listen to his music. Drake's private profile also makes him more enigmatic. Though he gave interviews freely during the early years, he has been much more restrained recently. Many people speculate that this adds to his allure.
Then there are his collaborations. Drake has obviously worked with hip-hop royalty like Jay-Z and Kanye West, but he is also not afraid to work with younger artists as their careers are still heating up. His features with artists like Travis Scott and Kendrick Lamar helped their songs to blow up when they were still only moderately popular. Migos, Dram, and I Love McConan can also thank Drake in part for their popularity. By working with a constantly rotating cast of new talent, Drake keeps himself fresh and introduces himself to new fans. Sometimes he doesn't even need to collaborate with an artist to get attention from their fans. Artists like Bryson Tiller and Kodak Black were merely pictured with Drake on social media, which earned them attention. And then there's the fact that Drake doesn't hold himself to any one genre. Critics complain that he doesn't have a real style, but his ability to change with the taste of the public has served him well. The musician first made waves with emotive hip-hop songs like Take Care and Marvin's Room, effectively bridging the gap between emo and the showy, vulgar rap made famous by Young Money label mate Lil Wayne. But by 2013, he was making more straightforward top 40 pop music before going full sad boy in 2015 with his mixtape If You're Reading This, It's Too Late. In the years that passed, Drake made everything from SoundCloud rap to grime and everything in between. Again, this made him enemies who seem to think that this is the result of ghost-written music, but it helped him stay afloat throughout the entire decade even as tastes changed. And along the way, Drake changed the way the public hears rap. Before Drake, it was assumed that rappers would work with singers and that these roles were mutually exclusive, but Drake changed that forever. He was a double threat because he could both sing and rap, and by making the genre, he set the template for what would eventually become the global pop norm. He fundamentally rewrote the rules of what it meant to be a rapper in the 2010s. Before him, Kanye West and Lil Wayne had fiddled around with melodic rapping, T-Pain too of course, but Drake made it a whole world view, and by the time of his 2010 debut album Thank Me Later, he'd quickly become the most popular figure in the genre. Many people credit him with paving the road to trap, when artists like Future, Fetty Wap and Young Thug blurred the lines between talking, singing and rapping. By 2017, traditional rap norms were obliterated. Almost every new rap star minted since then has been a true hybrid. Gunna, Lil Uzi Vert, XXXTentacion, Juice World, Travis Scott, Lil Baby, A Boogie With The Hoodie, Young Boy Never Broke Again and many, many more. Drake also helped rap go global. He's been a significant driving force behind the increased conversation between emergent hip-hop adjacent music scenes around the world, Nigeria, England, the Caribbean, and beyond. As a result, he has a massive international fan base who all stream his songs and buy his tickets when he tours. And then there are the Toronto Raptors. Drake is more or less their unofficial mascot, and he has brought much needed attention to the once lesser known NBA team. In 2013, Drake was announced as the new global ambassador of the Toronto Raptors. Drake was also given the key to the city. In the role, it was announced that Drake would help to promote and serve as a host of festivities beginning with the All-Star Game. He would also provide consulting services to rebrand the team, helping to redesign its image and clothing line in commemoration of the franchise's 20th anniversary. But the help was reciprocal because it cemented his popularity among Torontonians and basketball fans alike. Of course, he also got a $769,000 custom Raptors jacket and a $150,000 custom 2019 NBA Finals Championship ring. This is in addition to the numerous corporate sponsorships under Drake's belt. Two months prior to the release of Views, Drake announced the development of Virginia Black, a bourbon-based whiskey. This would be his second foray into selling food and drink, previously partnering with celebrity chef Susur Lee to open Fring's restaurant in Toronto. Though he has many billions of plays on Spotify, Drake also signed a deal with Apple Music in 2015, with the artist penning an exclusivity agreement with the service worth a reported $19 million. This saw all future solo releases of Drake becoming available first on Apple Music before seeing rollout to other streaming services and music retailers. Then in 2017, Drake and Adele Future Newer co-founded the production company Dream Crew, which functions both as a management company and entertainment group. The company has produced the television series Euphoria and Top Boy. Their debut film as producers was with LeBron James and a production company, Uninterrupted, on the sports documentary The Carter Effect, detailing the impact of Vince Carter in Canada. In addition to the short-term financial benefits of these deals, they also resulted in more promotion and more headlines. At the end of the day, Drake's music is not entirely different from other major pop stars. He is a master of self-promotion and he has the stats to back it up. Love him or hate him, he made an indelible mark on the 2010s and shows no signs of slowing down. 
in his own words, started from the bottom, now we're here. Drake has effectively gone from totally unknown to mega famous in just over a decade.